Hello YouTube, so welcome to my allotment. I hope you can hear me, it's quite windy up here, it's a very exposed site, um, but great to be here. So I'm just panning round, there's my bike, I cycled up here, the shed and the compost. So as you can see, it's basically just a big load of grass and very compact in soil. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I thought I'd do a quick tour and show you a couple of things. Um, so, we already have black currants that I'm going to need to deal with in the winter. They need pruning desperately and weeding. Um, when I first got here, the things I was really interested in were the, the plants that were on the ground and what they could tell me about the soil, what soil type I was dealing with. So to find that out, I um, spoke to the neighbours, actually, and had a look. So apparently plants can tell you an awful lot. Now I think, judging by the plants that are here, is mainly couch grass, um, there's some speedwell over there, dandelions, I think the soil hasn't been worked. Well, I know it hasn't been worked for a while because I spoke to the neighbours and um, it's lacking in nutrients itself. Now if there were nettles and things on the site that would tell you that actually it was quite high in nutrients. Now there are nettles on the site which I'm very pleased about because they're extremely useful. But they're over here on the compost thereby proving what I've just said. So obviously that's where the nutrients are, so that's where the nettles are. So here we are. And the next thing I wanted to look at was um, the soil. Now it's been a very, very dry summer and you can see the soil is very cracked. So I immediately looked at that and realised it was clay soil, quite heavy soil. I'm quite pleased about that. I, I gardened in sandy soil when we were in Doncaster. That has its own challenges. Easier to work. So there we go. So my next, so what I did next was I posted on Facebook my allotment ask people what for advice really on the best way to tackle tackle it to start and of course it started this whole debate about whether to dig or not to dig and most of the people that posted on my site were very anti well not anti digging there was a couple that were very anti digging and it became quite polarized so we have some real enthusiasts for no digging and some enthusiasts for digging now I've done both and both have worked very well um, so what I'm going to do now is just talk about that a little bit. I was going to kind of come into shop, but actually I think it's beyond my technical capabilities at the moment. So I'll just sit down, talk about digging and no digging. Um, so the advantages of no digging are that obviously it's less, less work in some ways, but don't, people say, oh, there's no work, but it's, people then think there's no work, but that is not true. There is work with both. Um, and I think it's both, you know, it's hard work in both cases, actually. Um, so with no digging, you, you build normally a raised bed on the soil, fill it with uh, compost and plant straight into it. You're not disrupting the soil. Um, the microorganisms are left alone and the argument is your soil is in better condition. Um, and yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. Um, the One Store Revolution is an excellent book I'd recommend you read about a Japanese guy who gardened in a very similar way um, with great success, actually. His yields were amazing. Um, the digging argument, and it's what the biodynamic um, method would, would advocate, is that actually you're allowing the soil, uh, you're enlivening the soil and allowing the earth to work in... Um, harmony with the cosmos the world you know the the air around it the atmosphere and and the cosmos biodynamics is very much about working in tune with the cosmos so i was kind of left with this decision to dig or not to dig now uh, my and actually i went with my gut instinct so my gut instinct was to dig actually um i don't know the soil so for me the positives of doing that I, I don't know the soil, I don't know the ground, it helps me to get to know the allotment. I also think you're then incorporating it. For me, this, it's very compacted, very dry. If I was to just build a raised bed on this, I feel as though I'm just smothering it. I'm not using it or incorporating what's already here. I'm just kind of smothering it and it, it won't get used. It'll just create a hard pan underneath the, um, 
the raised bed, which for me just isn't going to work. Plus, the idea of lugging loads of wood and compost up here when I haven't got a car is really doesn't fill me with any sense of joy. So I've chosen to dig, and as you can see, I've started my dug my first bed. Well, not dug actually, I forked it over. So yesterday I came up, spent a few hours forking this over, some meter by two and a half meters. Um, it was very hard work because it is very dry and solid. Um, but actually quite satisfying. So what I did was I kind of fought it over. I found the kind of subsoil, which is very red. Um, so actually, I don't, you don't have to go down too far to reach the subsoil. There's very few worms in it and not a huge amount of life, actually. But saying that, there is life on the allotment. So when we first came, there were frogs. Um, I've seen ladybirds today and crickets enjoying the long grass yesterday. So there is life here. And the allotments on either side of me are doing very well. So, And I think the soil actually is, um, is fairly good quality. Someone has worked it, but not for a long time. Um, so I'm very encouraged. So that's it. So the next thing I'm going to do with this is dig in some manure, which I've ordered and has been delivered by the farmer down the road, Farmer Pete. So he's delivered this, which has landed on my rhubarbs, but that's fine. They'll be quite happy about that. Um, another job that I would like to do is I'm going to have to, there's a jasmine in the hedge, which I'm going to sort out. But I'm going to take cuttings first. <laughs> 